How's it going, YouTube? Mark from Like Minded Lunatics coming at you with a Friday night reaction video. I'm excited about today's song and video. It's a good one. But before we get to that, let me first say thank you to all the folks who have been adding us as subscribers. We really appreciate your support. If you've added us already, thank you. And uh, hey, why not share us on social media? We're on all the platforms. We're on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Seek us out. Tell your friends, hey, there's some folks doing some cool stuff I think you might like. And if you've not yet subscribed, let me encourage you to do so. This channel was started by myself and my writing partner, Todd Wright. Because of COVID, we are storytellers in the Austin, San Antonio area, and we couldn't perform anymore, so we decided to throw stuff up online. Uh, so if you like this segment, you might check out some of our other stuff. We've got original stories, original music. My writing partner, Do Todd Wright, does a segment we call Drink, Play, Swear. That's where Todd, who is a professional storyteller, by the way, plays a classic video game, drinks an adult beverage, and tries to tell you a story at the same time. You don't have to know anything about video games to make it fun. And this week, things got crazy. Todd was playing uh, TMNT 4, Turtles in Time, and uh, he tells us stories about childhood Saturday morning cartoons. It's a crazy time. Yeah, you, you need to go check it out. Go, go click that over here. All right, so today we're going to take a look at Deftones' uh, new song, Ceremony, and the accompanying video. Now, this just came out. I don't know when you're watching it, but uh, watching this video, but for me, this is um, uh, April 23rd. It came out like two days ago, and I have been obsessed with this thing, obsessed with it. Uh, now, this video was directed by, let me make sure I get it right, I've got a lot of stuff here, by Lee Whannell. Now, Lee Whannell is a director and writer. He was the writer of Saw, Insidious, The Invisible Man. He also directed uh, the third chapter of Insidious and The Invisible Man, and he's directing, a, he's listed as directing a uh, reboot of Escape from New York. I don't know what I feel about that, but, um, the direction on this video is beautiful, and uh, man, it is a deep, deep one. I'm going to go ahead and tell you at the outset here, you might want to go watch the video in its entirety before we do the breakdown, because I've got a lot of stuff I want to get to, and uh, uh, and so I'll be starting and stopping this thing, but I think it's going to be worth it. So let me bring up the frame here, and uh, if, you're, if you're new around here, let me tell you, we always enjoy a beer with our Friday Night Reaction video, just a way to cap off the week. Now, you don't have to have an alcoholic beverage with me, but come on. Let's have a drink to, to celebrate the end of a week and hopefully the beginning of a great weekend. Now this week I'm going with, uh, this is an Austin classic, you guys. This is an electric jellyfish from Pint House Pizza. If you ever get a chance, I'm not even gonna taste it and tell you what it tastes like because I know what it tastes like. If you ever get a chance, find this beer. I'm not, I'm not kidding, find it, find it. It's so good. All right, cheers everybody. All right, now. Let's do this. So, Ceremony Deftones, directed by Lee Whannell. And I do think it's important enough to mention the director here. Here we go. All right. Yes, I'm stopping it already. Now, before we get too deep into this, I want to say that I think this entire video is what's known in literature as a catabasis. A catabasis is a story that deals with traveling into the underworld. So I'm going to go ahead and argue I think that's what this is about. Now, in the comment section of the YouTube uh, video for this video, there's a lot, of, a lot of YouTubers who have noticed some similarities between scenes and lyrics from other Deftone songs. I completely see those those links. However, I do think there's probably something deeper going on, and I'm gonna argue that it's a catabasis, a hero's journey, maybe not a hero, a journey into the underworld. Now, the first thing I want us to notice, we're looking at a Mustang, so a horse, and I'm not sure if it's white. I think that it is, and if it is, that's gonna be important. Okay, again, a lot to unpack. So if I'm right, 
and this is a catabasis, this gentleman probably rep re represents what's known as a psychopomp. In Greek mythology, Greek and Roman, a psychopomp was a de demon or a spirit that guided someone into the underworld. Charon is the most famous. He was the boatman that took people across the river Styx. I think the doormen, and there's gonna be, there's gonna be, what is it? Uh, there's gonna be five of them. Uh, I think the doormen are psychopomps, letting this protagonist into each section of the underworld. The same All right, I think the lyrics at this point are important. So our protagonist, and please notice I'm using the term protagonist, not hero. That's gonna be important in a second. Just as the protagonist starts to look around in this first section, the lyrics say, it's an illusion. It's all an illusion? Now the first verse was, how can't you see this is the end? Let's face the truth, it's obvious. A different morning, the same charade. Tell me what's left. Now. In the lyrics, they spell morning, M-O-R-N-I-N-G. I don't know if that's the case. I think that that's a homonym and we're supposed to get confused whether it means morning as in time of the day or morning to mourn the verb. I'm not sure. Now, the other thing that I want to make sure I mention is that, uh, number one, if this is a hero's journey or a, a hero's call to adventure like the monomyth, that means some very important things for us. So starting in the 18th, 19th century, literary critics began to notice in literature there was a common motif that a lot of stories followed. People like Joseph Campbell, Lord Raglan, and Rank, they called this the monomyth. Basically, all of these stories follow the same setup. So essentially, and I, I, I just summarized them very quickly, a miraculous conception and birth, initiation of the child hero. There has to be a trial and there has to be a quest. The hero dies. The hero descends into the underworld. Then there is a resurrection, a rebirth, an ascension, an apotheosis into the, 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 uh, the heavens, an atonement, and finally withdrawal from family or community for meditation and preparation. All right, so if you think about it, if you think about it, that... Monomyth is present in a lot of stuff from the story of like Gilgamesh to the story of Beowulf to uh, Dionysus to Hercules to, uh, to Jesus to Neo to Luke Skywalker. That basic framework exists through a lot of literature. Now, I think we're going into the descent into the underworld. I think this is the harrowing of hell, basically. All right, so let's get back. So second verse, prep the surface, bound my limbs, place a chair beneath the rail on the outside, just skin and bones. Show me what's left. Now it sounds like suicide. It for sure sounds like suicide, but I don't know that the video supports that interpretation. Now, the interesting thing is Deftones had written this song before uh, Lee Wanell got a hold of it. So perhaps the lyrics have to do with Suicide in the video doesn't, it's entirely possible. One of the things that I noticed though here, so what we have is we have the protagonist going to the first psychopomp, uh, saying that you have to tell me a secret you've never told anyone, uh, I'm not who I say I am. Gets led into the first room of the underworld. Then the second psychopomp, you have to give me something meaningful, then led into the next one. Now, here's the color part. The first segment was a white horse. I think. The second segment is completely red. Is that ringing any bells with anybody? White, red, black, pale. Anybody? All right, so in the Revelation of John, chapter 6, one through, verses 1 through 8, this is what it says. 
as I watched the Lamb open the first of the seven seals. Then I heard one of the four living creatures say in a voice like thunder, Come! I looked, and there before me was a white horse. Its rider had a bow, and he was given a crown, and he rode out as a conqueror, bent on conquest. This is the first of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Now, originally, originally theologians said this was the Christ coming back. But as time went on, people started to interpret this as the Antichrist. So the first scene, white horse, completely white horse. Second scene, we get red. Now listen to this. When the land opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature say, Come, then another horse came out, a fiery red one. Its rider was given power to take peace from the earth and to make people kill each other. To him was given a large sword. First horseman of the apocalypse, white horse. Second horseman of the apocalypse, or red horse, and uh, that's usually interpreted as being war. Now watch the people in this scene. That doesn't look consensual, I guess. Looks like she's torturing that guy. Doesn't look like an s and thing. I don't know that he's enjoying it. That chick's being full on waterboarded, you guys. That lady's swinging around a knife willy nilly as people laugh. Now we get the third psychopomp. Now, back to Revelation. When the Lamb opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come! I looked, and there before me was a black horse. Its rider was holding a pair of scales in his hands. Then I heard what sounded like a voice among the four living creatures saying, Two pounds of wheat for a day's wages, and six pounds of barley for a day's wages, and do not damage the oil and the wine. This is the third horseman of the apocalypse, typically called famine, and the color here, black. And does this remind anybody of Dune? Boy, it sure did me. Now this isn't jet black, but watch the psychopomp. Pure black. So I'm not sure. Have we been seeing representations of the four horsemen of the apocalypse? If so, if, if so, there's one left. There's one left, death. Uh, and when the lamb opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature say, Come. I looked, and there before me was a pale horse. Its rider was named Death, and Hades was following close behind him. That's all we got left if we're working with the four horsemen of the apocalypse. I don't know if we are. But things so far have, have kind of looked in that direction. Now, a couple of other things that I want to point out. So uh, the first psychopomp asks her, uh, tell me a secret. The second one says, give me something meaningful. And the third one says, take a risk. So basically put your arm in here and, uh, you know, trust that something's going to happen, I guess. Now, oof, boy, that pine house is burpy. You know what I'm saying? Um, here's the interesting thing. At the Temple of Apollo in Delphi, which is where the oracle in Greek mythology w lived, uh, there were uh, Delphic maxims, but, and there were like a hundred and something of them, or a ton of them, but there were three that were the most important. And if you've seen Matrix, you've seen one of them. Uh, one of them was know thyself, Timetnoski, all right? So know yourself. Uh, and then the other was um, and Medio Virtus, so nothing in excess. Don't do anything in excess. And then the last one was surety brings ruin. Basically, if you're too sure of yourself, you're going to get yourself into trouble. What's interesting, I think, about all of these, these doors thus far is that she's been asked to either reveal something about herself or give something uh, from herself. And thus far, it appears that her surety is, is, is what's guiding her. She's certain she needs to go through these doors. The other thing that occurs to me, if you look right up there, right up there, you see a white owl. 
Now, you know, if you've studied mythology, uh, owls are never a good thing, ever. Uh, from classic Greek mythology, even going back into the, the Talmud, you know, we get uh, Lilith is supposed to have been Adam's first wife, and she refused to lie underneath him, and she took the form of an owl that left paradise. And now she kind of, uh, well, she doesn't care for men very much, but, uh, you know, she's, a, she's an omen of death. In Mexican-American culture, La Lechuza, a huge owl, uh, an omen of death. In fact, Todd has talked about that on Drink, Play, Swear. Go, go over here. He thinks he saw the damn thing. Uh, but an owl, never a good sign. All right, and that guy's cutting oranges. Uh, blood oranges, by the way. I don't know if you noticed. Now, what I think is interesting about this, this gentleman here is that he doesn't seem to be particularly perturbed by her threat on his life. In fact, he appears to have been waiting for that, as if that was the key through the door to threaten murder. That's not, I don't know if that's a positive thing, you guys. And the lyrics to this verse are also a little bit concerning. So I'm leaving you tonight. It's not fun here anymore. I'll be joining the parade of the ghosts who came before, leaving you complete, no surprise, uh, with one kiss, one caress. Ooh, the world we shared. Ooh, it was never there. Now, as far as the lyrics, one of the ghosts who came before leaving you... Oh, I'm sorry, let me back up. It's not fun here anymore. I'll be joining the parade of the ghosts who came before. Now, in mythology, there's, in a lot of different mythological traditions, there are a parade of ghosts or a parade of the dead. Uh, hell, it was in Lord of the Rings. Tolkien even kind of took it. Uh, All Hallows' Eve is probably one of the best examples of it. This person says, I'll be joining that parade tonight. Now, the lyrics may indicate suicide, but I don't think that the video does. If you notice, they're going down. The elevator itself is moving down. And she looks up forlornly like she's leaving stuff behind. And in fact, the lyrics say that she is. Now, this is obviously underground. Again, I think it kind of supports my theory, or my hypothesis, not a theory. My hypothesis that this is essentially the descent into the underworld of the hero's journey. But again, I don't know if she's a hero. Jesus Christ, people are wailing. There's gnashing of teeth. This doesn't appear to be a positive place, you guys. And she starts to realize it, right? All right, the last psychopomp. He doesn't have you do anything crazy. Just, are you ready? Again, I think it kind of falls in line with that, you know, that whole Tim at Noski, uh, in Medio Virtus, uh, surety brings ruin. It, all of those, those three maxims have to do with knowing yourself, knowing what you're ready for and knowing who you are. And that's essentially what his question is. Are you ready? There's no more subterfuge. There's no more give me something. Are you ready? Yes. Again, in my explication, this last room represents death. Now, the interesting thing there 
is that we didn't get to see what what that soothsayer, I, I mean, I don't know what else to call her. Maybe, maybe she's an oracle. We didn't get to see what she said. But it was something so devastating that our protagonist runs out and then falls to her knees like the other people she saw as she passed them. I don't know what to make of it. <laughs> uh, I don't have a solid reading on it other than I think that this is supposed to be representative of the underworld. I think it's a descent into the underworld that goes wrong because the protagonist surety brings ruin because the pr protagonist, or I, maybe it's uh, you know hubris, pride, um, thinks that she knows more than she does. And you know, the other interesting thing is if you, if you take a look at it, we essentially have, uh, we essentially have uh, seven speaking parts in this. Seven deadly sins. Is that, is that tied to it? You know, I don't know. Man, it's a confusing one. I feel like I'm gonna have to watch this damn thing like another 15, 20 times. I don't know about you. See her. Woo. Look at that. We just we just keep pulling out on that on that shot. I don't know, you guys. This was a this was a deep one for me, and I I think I have a little bit of a reading on it, but not a sure one. Uh, you know, I've spent some time in the YouTube comments for it. A lot of folks are you know are recognizing different allusions to previous Def Deftone songs. I love that. I think that's a great reading of it too. Um, but I feel like that there's a message in this video that I just, it's, it's like Morpheus said, it's like a splinter in your mind. That's what it feels like to me. So if you've got a different interpretation, I would love to hear it. Uh, so let me know in the comments what you think, if you've got a different interpretation of it, if you've got a different reading, if you know something about it that I don't, help me because th ugh, this one's bugging the hell out of me. Hmm. Well, I hope this was fun for you. Uh, it, it, uh, I, I, I don't think I solved anything, but I hope it was fun. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments what you think. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Please check out our other content. All right, folks, take care of yourselves. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you soon.